All right. Welcome, guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew. I'm an accredited exercise physiologist and a registered acupuncturist and teach Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, and exercise rehabilitation. So I love kind of sitting within this Venn diagram of modern exercise rehabilitation science and also classical movement and health, health practices. The foundation of all this is really understanding the body in a really good way. And so when we're looking at functional anatomy, we're really studying how the body works when it's engaged in movement, it's a functional movement anatomy. So that just really comes down to understanding all the various um, tissues and structures, tendons, ligaments, muscles, bones, where they are and what their role is and then what their role is in exercise particularly. So we've just completed the muscular section. So if you want to go back and review the muscles, please do so. And now we're going to move on to ligaments. So I'm going to starting off with this incredibly complex joint called the knee. Uh, the knee is really, really simple in one regard because it's really only got one movement. It's a hinge joint. So it just kind of flexes and extends. Um, and it has a little bit of rotation, a little bit of turning as well. But we have a lot of knee structures, a lot of ligaments, connective tissue that support and stabilize the knee. So the first thing to kind of um, be clear on is what's the role of a ligament? So ligaments go to bone to bone and they're tough connective collagenous tissue, which means that they don't have a lot of stretch but they're very, very strong. So everything is kind of like a trade-off, so like muscles that have good elasticity so they can kind of stretch out and then they return back to their resting position. So that's how you can kind of move through your full range. Where ligaments are the opposite. We don't want ligaments that are stretchy. We want ligaments that are nice and strong and stiff. Um, there is a little bit of pliability in them. They do have to move a little bit, but we don't want them stretched out. So the tissue in ligaments is really, really, really quite strong. And the role is to really keep the bones in position, okay, whilst the muscles are contracting and, and pulling on the bone to move them. So ligaments stabilize the joint, keep everything in, the, in its correct position. Muscles move the joint. And so the joint is where you have two bones. So in this case, we've got the femur and then we have the tibia. So where they, where they join or where they meet or where they articulate, that's called the joint. And so, and joints are kind of labeled or named after the two bones that create the joint. So here we have the femur and the tibia. So this is a femoral tibial joint. And we just typically call it the knee joint. Now there is a third bone here. This is the patella. So technically you could say this is the patella femoral joint because the patella sits on top of the femur and it doesn't really cross the tibia. Um, so if you want to get kind of like technical, technical, you could have the two joints in the knee. So there's the patella femoral joint and then you have the femoral tibial joint, uh, this one. This bone here is the fibula and it doesn't attach to or connect to the femur. So it's not technically a knee joint. It creates its own joint here. This is the tibio fibula joint here. So we really do have four uh, or three, sorry, three joints. We've got the, the tibia fibula joint. We have the femoral tibial joint. And then we have the uh, patella femoral joint here. So three big joints, which really comprise all the structures in the knee. Then we have a lot of different ligaments. So today we're going to review the key structures uh, in the knee. So the first one we will, will look at is the collateral ligaments. So the collateral ligaments are these big, big ligaments here. So this is the medial collateral ligament. So this one here is going to go from the tibia. This is called the tibial plateau. This piece of flat bone through here and it goes up to this bone here, which is the uh, femoral condyle. So this is your medial uh, ligament that stabilizes the inside of your knee. And what it's going to do is it's going to prevent, so with my, where my thumbs are, that's the medial side, 
it's going to kind of keep the, the knee from doing that. All right. So it gives a little bit of movement, all right, but we don't want to go too far. So that movement would be if someone kind of pushes your knee from the outside in, okay, that's called a val valgus movement, okay, and that's going to stretch or strain this uh, ligament here. So that's preventing your knee from buckling inward. Now, if we have the opposite one, we kind of have three of these ligaments here, but the primary one here is your lateral collateral ligament, which goes from the lateral femoral condyle, so that's a kind of a part of the femur here, down onto the tibia and also onto the head of the fibula here. So that's the fibula collateral ligament because it's attaching onto the fibula. Now we also have one next to it called the anterior lateral ligament of the knee. So they're kind of doing similar things, except the anterior lateral ligament of the knee is going to the, the uh, lateral tibial condyle here. They're both going to be preventing varus movements or if, if my thumbs are again on the inside, so they're going to be preventing the knee from going out that way. So knee getting pushed out. So imagine someone's kind of come from the inside and swept your leg and it's going to buck your knee moving outward. So that's going to stop that kind of lateral movement of the bones moving out that way. They also, when you flex and extend the knee, they kind of keep the, the condyles of the femur and the tibia. See this smooth bone in here? So this smooth bone in here, the articular area of the distal part of the femur, and this smooth part bone here is the articular area of the proximal part of the femur. That's the smooth part of the bone that's going to glide on the meniscus. So when you bend the knee, so that's a really smooth area. And it's got this big kind of bit of cushioning here, the meniscus here, and that's keeping this nice smooth aspect of the knee, the, the uh, articular area. So remember articular is where the joints connect, really smooth. So it's gonna slide and glide in that meniscus. And so you've got a medial meniscus and then you've got a lateral meniscus as well. So that's the next really important kind of component of the knee is the meniscus. So if we isolate the meniscus here, you can see it wraps right around from the back. This is the kind of the horn, posterior horn of the tibia. So where these kind of two condyles meet, that creates like a horn. So this disc is connecting onto the bone on the front and it's disc is connecting onto the bone on the back and the front. So this is the anterior side and this is the posterior side. So your disc, your meniscus connect onto the bone as well. Now, if we look at the medial collateral ligament here, the medial collateral ligament also has a kind of attachment onto the, the medial disc there as well, or the meniscus. So personally, in my case, I have done a grade three tear of this meniscus and created what's called a bucket handle tear of, sorry, a grade three tear of the medial collateral ligament and a buckle, bucket handle tear of the um, meniscus. So that creates uh, like a, a flap that comes up. Um, that was confirmed by uh, MRI. And I did that when I was doing plyometric jumping movements and I just did too much, it landed a bit funny and my knee buckled in this way. And it's basically sprained this ligament grade three. So Grade one is kind of pulled, but nothing, not, not really any tearing. Grade one, you're starting to get fiber tears. Grade two, grade three, quite a strong tear. And grade four is a full rupture. Okay, so I was kind of somewhere probably between grade two and grade three. Uh, had the option to have surgery. And I chose to conservatively manage that injury and using a combination of exercise rehabilitation techniques. Uh, Chinese medicine, so acupuncture and Chinese herbs. Uh, and I was able to fully recover that knee. And um, so yesterday, for example, I did a six kilometer run and did a 45 minute 
um, strength endurance weight training session, full full depth in my squats, in my lunges, pulled up fine. Every now and again, I got a little bit of irritation in this area, but essentially um, my knee is really good. I can I can kneel on my knee, full weight bearing, not a problem at all. Uh, if I go super heavy in squatting or I'm doing like really deep kettlebell, rack squats, things like that, I can get a little bit of irritation in here. So I tend not to train too heavy. I kind of like just listen to that joints, kind of what it's telling me. But um, yeah, I was able to do pretty much a full recovery. And that was kind of really nice because the lateral, the ligaments themselves typically have very poor blood supply. When you do do a, a fairly serious injury, sometimes they don't heal very well. So I think that was a combination of me just knowing what to do. Um, Chinese medicine, trying to acupuncture and herbal medicine is really, really, really helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, you know, I had a good response, a good recovery with that one. So we've got the medial collateral ligament. We have the lateral collateral ligament. So one going from the femur to the tibia, one going from the lateral femoral condyle to the head of the fibula. Uh, then we also have the two cruciate ligaments, so the anterior and the posterior cruciate. So this is the one that all footballers, typically the like um, most football codes, soccer, AFL, are going to be doing the anterior cruciate ligaments. So if we just click on that one there. So let's isolate this bad boy. So again, we're, we're using, um, guys, if you're new to the channel, we use this app called 3D for Medical or Complete Anatomy. There'll be a link in the description below. I have no affiliation. I'm not, I don't get any kickbacks from this at all. I just think it's an amazing app to learn anatomy with. And so I highly recommend that you get it. Uh, really reasonably priced and they're always updating it and working on it, making it look better, making it more functional. So just do yourself a favor, grab the app. It's well worth it. Uh, I recommend having a good PC to run it because uh, it does require a little bit of juice in the uh, PC engine, if you will. Anyway, so back to the ligaments. So if we come up here to isolate, we can tap on that and that gets rid of everything else. And we can kind of see that it's attaching really on this kind of anterior horn of the tibia. So where the two condyles kind of create a little valley in here, that's the anterior horn. And then it's going to come up to the medial side of the femoral horn in this kind of fossa region here. So the way to kind of think about the ACL and anterior cruciate ligament is if you put there, if this is my knee and this is the front part, this is the anterior part, what it's doing is it's stopping the femur from sliding forward or the tibia from sliding back. Okay, so this kind of anterior posterior translation. So often the mechanism of injury for this movement is a rapid stopping and then either the tibia keeps going forward or the femur keeps going forward or a bit of both. So one forward, one back. And that's going to strain that ligament there. So you can see there that the line of the, the ligament is going in this direction. So it's trying to keep the femur and the tibia in this nice kind of aligned position. And so like a lot of things in kind of musculoskeletal matter, there's a there's an, a balance to them. There's an uh, opposite and a, uh, a negative and an opposite one. And then on the back, we have the posterior cruciate ligament, which sits right behind. So if we isolate that one, here we have the posterior cruciate ligament. So a bit thicker. And this one here is going again from that kind of horn between the two tibial condyles onto this kind of fossa in the femur, a bit more lateral. Okay. And this one's more posterior. So it's going to try to stop more of this kind of posterior sliding forward this way. Posterior sliding forward doesn't make any sense. Posterior movement, so back right way. So typically what we say is if you've had an ACL Rico, for example, or an ACL tear, um, we try to avoid movements where you're going to step forward and create that kind of anterior like um, translation of the femur. So one thing we do is we, we do a lot of kind of uh, static lunges and step ups and we focus on stepping back and down, not stepping forward and down. Because if you step forward and down, that's going to stress the ligament. 
if you step back and down, it's kind of really kind of stresses more of a posterior ligament here. Uh, and of course, at some point, we're going to integrate stepping forward and down so you can really stress that ligament and train it. So ligaments can be trained. They can get strengthened over time. In fact, that's one of the secrets of a really healthy and robust joint is to over time load the connective tissue structures. Their metabolic uptake is a lot slower than muscle um, up to about 500 days. So the programming needs to be really progressive and patient to really optimize the joint health. So when I rehab my knee, it took it like a good 12 months and then another 12 months. So a good two years of just rehabbing it to get the really good full range of movement I was looking for. Um, but if you, if you don't have an injury, this is one of the benefits of doing full range loaded strength and conditioning type exercises, slow, controlled, full range to depth, getting the nice stretch in the muscles. And over time, that connective tissue will get stronger and stronger and stronger. It'll adapt. So it's, it's kind of like a bit of a thing. Like if you're training in the gym, you know, you really want to give yourself like a good three year window to develop the connective tissue strength before you really start to kind of really progress into really powerful, either strength training, hypertrophy training and plyometric training. If you go into that stuff too quick, the muscles can develop fairly fast, um, but the connective tissues kind of tends to lag. So we've got the, our medial collateral ligament on the inside, stopping the valgus or inside knee buckling. We've got the lateral core ligaments. So we've got the two here. They're stopping the knee from going out this way. We've got our anterior crucial ligament, which is stopping the anterior translation of the femur on top of the tibia. And then we have the posterior um, and uh, posterior crucial ligament, which is stopping the posterior translation. So they're, they're the key ones. They're the ones that are most commonly injured in folks. Then we also have these two muscles here. So we have the lateral patellofemoral ligament and the medial patellofemoral ligament. So this one is keeping the kneecap in position in this nice kind of groove of the, of the patella here, of the femur. So if we isolate the patella, can we isolate the patella? Yeah. Let's isolate that. Uh, that's uh, let's have a look at straight others. Nope. So there's a nice groove on the top of the femur here, which the patella is going to kind of sit in. And as you're bending your knee, the patella just kind of like sits in, on the groove. The, the main role of the patella is to add a fulcrum and actual lever so the tendon of the quads can get a stronger contractile pull on this bone here. This is a tibial tuberosity there. Now, if you dislocate your knee, the first time you dislocate your knee, typically most dislocations go um, knee cap outward. Okay. So this tendon here, the medial uh, the medial patellofemoral ligament um, to properly dislocate your knee, this, this ligament here often gets torn or ruptured. So the first time you do that dislocation, it'll be quite painful somewhere on this medial side. And you can, you can then get a little bit of fracturing either on the edge of the tibia or on the edge of the medial kind of uh, condyle here of the femur as a bit of bone gets pulled off as well. A good friend of mine um, had a fall, he landed awkwardly and he dislocated this knee ruptured this tendon and he has a little bit of bone um, sticking out there. You can get patel, um, a lot of dislocation issues from really tight ITB and all that kind of jazz here. That's definitely a thing. Uh, and particularly if you've, you've had this tendon ruptured, then you've got to have this stronger lateral pull of the kneecap and you can get kind of patella tracking issues. And that can kind of manifest pain up in here, the top of the patella. Because what, what happens is the patella gets pulled a little bit to the side and up and it gets pinned on the top of the femur. And so that smooth glide on the articular surface of the femur doesn't happen. You can get irritation there or you can get irritation at the, where the patella tendon here attaches onto the patella there. So they're important ligaments to happen. When you do dislocate your knee the first time, I'll, I'll often 
order an MRI just to rule out that, to see if you've torn that ligament. Um, just to, so they, they can tell if it's been, you can, if you get the right angle, potentially dislocate that kneecap without tearing that ligament. And if that's the case with good rehab, that should recover pretty well. Okay. Um, but if you had a chronic knee dislocation type issue, uh, it can be quite tricky because the strong ITB and quads with no stabilization of, of the knee patella there kind of creates this lateralized pull, which can create issues for folks. Then so we're going into this ligament here. So if we go back, undo, 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 undo. Here we go. So we're onto the patella ligament. And then we have above that is the 10 of the quadriceps. It's essentially one big ligament that wraps around the patella. So coming down from the tendon, super big, thick tendon, wraps around and then threads into the patella ligament, which attaches onto the tibial tuberosity, this kind of big lump on the, on the front of the shin bone. Yeah, and that's the strong attachment of the ligament of the knee. You can get patella tendonitis here, and that's typically related to that poor tracking we're talking about with the kneecap or the patella. Uh, really, really sensitive area just underneath the kneecap there for a lot of folks. So that can be quite sensitive and irritable. If you move on to the posterior aspects, we've got a couple more ligaments here to check. We have this huge one here, this is the popliteal ligament. Okay, so it goes from the medial side and then on to the lateral condyle of the femur. And so it's going to pull the ligament down and in. So this is the kind of like prevents too much of twisting. So you've got it was kind of a rotational kind of ligament that helps prevent the knee from twisting too much. Too much twist in the knee can sprain these ligaments here. So another mechanism of injury for a lot of these ligaments is where you plant your foot and then you go to change direction. The foot is stable, so the foot stays where it is. And then you turn and then the twist goes into the knee itself instead of coming through the torso or through the ankle, which has got more range of movement. So this kind of landing and twisting movement really common in X and netball, for example, is one of the key mechanisms of the injury for, for knee problems. So you've got the popliteal ligament here, which is stopping that kind of tibial rotation and femoral rotation. And then you've got the arcuate popliteal ligament, which is basically coming the opposite direction. So you can kind of see that this one's going to be resisting twisting this way. This one's going to be resisting twisting or rotation that way. So they're going to work together to do that. And then the last one is we have the medial meniscotibial ligament. So each ligament is connected to the meniscus. So depending on where you injure your meniscus is you're also potentially going to get some ligamentous tearing as well. So the, connect to the meniscus is attaching onto the ligament, which is attaching it onto the femur itself. So I have a client at the moment who has a mild meniscus tear in this area, kind of medial, and you can kind of like palpate on it and it's quite point tendon and tender. It's got a lot of point tenderness to it, but we have full range of movement of the knee. We can kind of load it and create a little bit of twisting rotation. It, it's a little bit irritable, but it's, it's fine. All the ligaments are intact. Um, so that one we can definitely conservatively manage and we keep an eye on it. And the approach is we facilitate a lot of gentle range of movement. That's really important because we want to encourage synovial fluid to lubricate the joint, which will bring in good nutrients to help heal because the actual joint space itself relies on the joint capsule to lubricate and bring in nutrients into the joint itself. So if we, maybe we could bring that in so we can find that synovial. Okay, knee joint. Oh, 
do it correctly. Got to let's look at the pop-up. There we go. So here we have the fibrous layer of the articular capsule of the knee joint. So then there's a whole big tendon which wraps around front to back. So encases the whole joint. And so within, within the joint, within the kind of the joint cavity of the spaces, you, you'll secrete synovial fluid, which is like the WD-40 or the oil in the joint. And that secretion of the joint brings in the nutrients. So one of the key things in early stages is, is we, after the acute inflammation is kind of resolved, we, we introduce lots of passive or very light active range of movement exercises to help facilitate loading of the joint and secreting of that nice synovial fluid, which helps to kind of create the healing aspect of the joint. So we want to really restore where we can. So when we're, when we're doing rehabilitation, what we're trying to do is manage the acute inflammation phase first, and then we are optimizing the natural healing inflammation response. And then once that kind of process has occurred, which is between 48 hours to six weeks, then we go into remodeling and, and that's where the exercise really starts to kick in. Okay. So the first couple of weeks is typically more manual therapy treatment, really gentle range of movement type of work, managing kind of spasm of the joint, like quadsal spasm, castle spasm. If they spasm, they tighten up too much, it compresses the joint, restricts the movement, and that can create secondary issues. And then we're introducing gentle exercise and movement as soon as we can within the comfortable pain range of the individual. You know, you can't not do this stuff without getting uncomfortable. There's going to be some discomfort, but the pain needs to be manageable. And the key is not to irritate the structures that you are inflamed and you go backwards the following day. So it's a little bit of a kind of step-by-step -step process. And then gradually you'll introduce um, resistance exercises to load up the tissues and the structures and restore pain-free full range of movement. So we want a pain-free full range of movement with strength and control. That's the key. We're looking to get that because you can get the pain free, but if you don't have the strength to control when you go back to sport or playing your activities or going to the gym, pain free does not mean fully rehabilitated. So remember like that kind of remodeling phase, particularly when you're talking about connective tissues is it takes 10 months, 500 days, it takes a long time. And so if you're too aggressive with your rehab initially, uh, you can really set yourself backwards. All right, so that is a good overview, I feel, of the knee, ligaments, and structures. If you have any questions, uh, absolutely drop me a comment below. Always love to kind of hear your guys' comments and feedback. Of course, we can go in a lot more detail into the knee. It's quite a trick. It, it's one of those kind of ironic ones. It's really simple, the movement, but they've got so many structures around it. If you get a knee injury, they can be really, really tricky, and it's really worth connecting with a good physiotherapist, a good exercise physiologist, chiropractic osteopath who understands exercise and rehabilitation and they can kind of guide you through the process. Um, so if you enjoyed this uh, video, we would really appreciate a like um, and a share and a subscribe, all those good things. You know, let's be positive to YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. And um, we will see you for the next ligament video where we'll be looking at the key ligament structures of the ankle. So we'll see you for that one. Okay. Wherever you are, stay curious, keep learning, train well, be healthy, eat good, and be kind to people. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.